What's going on guys, Ohms Form coming at you guys today with another video and I'm continuing with the training camp videos, Detroit Lions. We're on day 11, day 11 was yesterday. Um, so, you know, I'm a day behind on, uh, on some videos when I'm on uh, a different shift. So that's just the way it goes right now. But thanks to guys like Eric Schlitt, John Macaron, Tim Twentyman, Mike O'Hara, Jeremy Reisman, Jeff Risden. It wasn't those Lions beat writers getting out that info for, uh, for me to to read and uh, get out for you guys and you know we just wouldn't be seeing it um so kudos to those guys just doing their thing and not uh, putting out that lions content and that lions uh reports so we love it uh some key rookies out here pressing um, day 11 in the books for the detroit lions which was yesterday getting ready to actually uh have joint practice with uh, the new york football giants my second favorite team um and i'm just gonna try to get those out too i think that starts tomorrow as well so don't even know if they had a practice today, which is Sunday. And uh, happy birthday to my little baby girl. Um, she's 11 years old, and I'm so proud of her, and I love her so much. And, and uh, she has a friend over, so I'm able to do this video and I'm gonna do a podcast later on. So uh, happy birthday, baby. Um, I love you so much. Daddy loves you. My girl, she'll make me cry. Um, but yeah, there was some individual one-on-one -on -one drills. Uh, going on some individual work as well. 11 on 11 matchups, uh, mixed in with some situational football scenarios, all that kind of good stuff that football brings. Um, but the attendance and the injury, uh, cornerback Emmanuel Mosley still on the pup, but he's officially in the building now. You know, I think I said it last video maybe, or video before that, that he might have been here, but he's officially there. He was seen on the sidelines, even saying that he's happy where his progress is. He doesn't know when he's going to be able to come on the field. Week one availability, not too sure. It seems uncertain. Um, he did have some cleanup on that knee, so it doesn't look like he's going to be ready week one. So just prepare yourself, Lions fans, for that. Hennon Hooker still on the NFI non-football injury list. Quarterback on a Tennessee. Jamison Williams was a no-show. Don't know what happened there. Jamar Jefferson, no show it either. I uh, don't know if he was on the sidelines or anything, but he wasn't um, in attendance, so I don't know if those guys were banged up. Um, don't know what's going on with those guys. I know Dan Campbell just came out recently and said that he, Jameson needs to be out in the field. He needs to be on the field. He needs to get those physical reps as well as the mental reps is too, but the physical reps are pretty damn important. He's had a long time to get those mental reps in. Now it's time for the physical part and uh, don't know what's wrong with him. This wasn't seen out there. I guess we'll hear more about it tomorrow. Um, Denzel Mims. Did get hurt during practice. Uh, looks like it was his right lower leg, his ankle maybe. Uh, he went up for a nice catch. Uh, made a beautiful over the middle catch. Came down pretty hard on it. Um, don't know who was in coverage. I, 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 I might have wrote it down, but he came down hard on, on his ground. I think it was Tracy Walker. Um, so yeah, he, he made a great catch over the middle. I got it written down right here. Um, contact with Tracy Walker made him go down hard. So. Uh, he was on the ground for a long time, apparently. Um, he's had some injury history, uh, Denzel Mims, the former New York football jet. So uh, we're going to find out what's going on with that. But he was on the ground for a long time, but he ended up walking off on his own, and he, and he was seen going into the facility. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more on that. And then Trinity Benson out with a leg injury. Dan Campbell saying that they escaped a pretty significant injury. So... Uh, but he's day-to-day -day right now. And then Frank Ragnow is back. Nobody knew if it was for his kid or what was going on, uh, but he is back. Uh, and then uh, D.B. Ifieto, Melifonwu back. He did get demoted down to the 13 reps, uh, playing safety behind Tracy Walker and Savion Smith. Was it, was it a demotion, though? Really, we don't really know. He was seen with a compression sleeve on his leg, so... Maybe they're just kind of just acclimating him back into the uh, uh, system and uh, just getting some lower reps. So who knows what's going on with him, but he, he was hurt. So I uh, don't really want to say it's a demotion because of his play, maybe because it's just because of the injury. So, uh, and then, you know, back to, uh, you know, some of our rookies, man, uh, Jameer Gibbs showing out. Uh, Gibbs getting a lot of first team, first team looks. He's getting, he's, he's, his reps are increasing in this offense. Um, David Montgomery was getting first team reps as well, though, with the 11 on 11s, shifting Gibbs to the second team, but they're going back and forth, kind of. So Gibbs getting a lot of looks, kind of standard what's going on right now. Craig Reynolds to the third team, so, you know, getting uh, looks over Justin Jackson. 
Uh, that's big for Craig Reynolds. He's trying to win, win that RB3 spot. Um, and he's got a hill to climb. So right there. So, um, But three of the first five plays were to Jameer Gibbs. You know, a run right. And then a Sudfeld to Gibbs in the flat. You know, and then a quick out. Trying to get that yak, that yards after contact. But they're trying to get him really involved in his offense early. And they're going to show that right now with Gibbs. So, and then Goff to Gibbs with a 16-yard wheel route. That was a touchdown. Malcolm Rodriguez in coverage. Situational. So, you know, um... It's good that Goff seeing that, you know, in, in having trust in, in rookies, and uh, and uh, and Gibbs getting in the end zone just just, just spells success f- for this offense. And then Gibbs did struggle in pass protection, though. Okay, not everything's positive around here. There are some negatives, and uh, he did struggle in pass protection. Um, Jalen Reeves may have been the linebacker, beat him twice easily. Uh, on a rush move, um, he did get revenge on Jalen Reeves. Maybe a little bit later on, on a one-on-one where Maven was trying to cover him in a in a pass rep, no chance there. Gibbs just showing off his speed and his separation, but his pass protection is something to be desired. And there's more on that, and I'm I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to talk about it. So we'll touch on that a little bit later on when we talk about some of the things. But he's going to be impactful. Um, Jameer Gibbs is going to be impactful, you know. Uh, Holmes doesn't want to call him a running back. He wants to call him a weapon. You know, I call him Weapon G. So that, that, that's just what he's going to be. Um, he's going to be that guy. And Dan Campbell said it too. Dan Campbell wants, he wants the Montgomery. He wants Montgomery to be that guy that can possibly be 20, 25, 30, 30 carries in a game. Potentially. Potentially, you know, um, and then Gibbs being that kind of that kind of that situational guy, that home run, that weapon guy that can get you the first downs, that can get you touchdowns, get you big chunks to be that weapon. He's going to be a humongous part of this weapon, a, a part of this offense. So it's something to look forward to. But, you know, this, this this is going to be a really good offense if Gibbs can stay healthy. If Gibbs can stay healthy, he's going to be everything that DeAndre Swift was not. So we'll touch more on that a little bit later on but we touch on some of the blocking in a bit hopefully I can remember it while I'm doing this video to talk about it man I, I got it in the back but Amon Ross St. Brown and Laporta they seem to be the go-to guys I've been talking about that as well too a lot you know situational look scenario look out there there was first team D versus the second team O starters were down 10 points 341 on the clock left ball on the own on their own 25 yard line of the offense defense with three timeouts so it was a three and out punt period. So first team D didn't, you know, D did well versus the second team offense. And that's what you want to see. But you want to see that second team offense do a little bit better. But it's good to see that the first team defense just shut down completely that second team uh, offense. So that's a good look right there. Then the first team came on. First team O versus the first team D. 321 left on the clock. A little bit different, you know, 20 seconds off that clock. No timeouts, down 10. You know, it, this was kind of a long process. Um, Houston had some pressure. Goff in completion. Second down. Goff, Amon Ross, St. Brown, 19 yards. Turns into a first down. Then Goff to Laporta. First down. Goff to St. Brown. Again, Goff to Laporta. There's a pattern there. Eric Schlitt making that a point. Saying there, there, there was just a pattern. You can just see that he is looking for Goff and Laporta. I mean, he's looking for St. Brown and Laporta. Jared Goff is. So... That's a really good look. Those are two guys he's going to rely on. And I think St. Brown needs that guy. You know, we had we had a smattering of guys that, you know, that he could, that Goff could go to last year instead of St. Brown. It was, it was Josh Reynolds one day, you know, then it was Khalif Raymond having a day. Hawkinson when he was here for a bit. Laporta seems to be that guy right now. But don't forget about guys like Josh Reynolds, Marvin Jones. Those guys are going to make plays too as well. But it's just really Gibbs. It's just really nice to see that there's two guys that Goff is really going to count on. It's going to be just St. Brown and, and Laporta. Not just the only two, but the two go-tos. And that's what I really like. And then Goff, after you know, the sixth play, it was it, it was a miss to Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones getting a look. And then Goff um, misses Amon Ross St. Brown. And then Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown for 12, gets another first down. And then Starling Thomas with a nice pass breakup on Josh Reynolds. Then Raymond beats Starling Thomas on a 12-yarder. Don't forget about Khalif Raymond. And uh, 
Yeah, so they just did, you know, they just did a lot of work there. And then onside kick recovery, it was simulated, though. You don't want to get guys hurt on those onside kicks because there's a lot of guys banging right there. So you don't want to get guys hurt. And then uh, first team O versus, um, I believe it was the first team D still. I'm not really too sure. I didn't write that down. I should have. I don't know why I stopped running it, but I did. But they were down minute 24 left, down three points, screened to David Montgomery. Then Amon Ross St. Brown with a 12-yarder. Amon Ra again with a 9-yarder. Amon Ross St. Brown with an incomplete. Then Montgomery with a first down run. Spiked the ball, 27 seconds left. Then an 18-yard touchdown to Laporta. Jack Campbell on the coverage. Jack Campbell was beat clearly. Um, there's even um, there's even video on, on, on X, you want to call it X, or AKA Twitter, whatever they're calling it now. Uh, it's a really nice throw by Jared Goff and a really nice nice catch in feet by um, Laporta, who's coming in quick, right right in the corner, right in, right by the right by the cone, right by the cone. Nice feet, touchdown Laporta, that touchdown Lions. So um, again, looking for Laporta, looking for St. Brown, getting results. So pretty much what you're what, what you're going to see again is going to be a target monster. Is Alan Ross St. Brown is going to be that target monster, and the porn is looking like that second option um, as of right now. So with, with, with other guys coming in the fold like Gibbs, Reynolds, Khalif, Marvin Jones, David Montgomery, this offense is going to be this offense is going to be really good, man. It's just I keep talking about it. You know, it's just there's no reason why they're not going to be a top five unit. No reason. They were last year. They were a top five unit, top 10 and, um, in many, many categories. St. Brown was awesome. Goff was great. Goff played really well uh, for a majority of his football games, uh, of the games last year. He had, he, he had some bad moments, but the whole offense did as a whole. But majority, they were great. So, and then, and then you know, guys like Brian Branch and Sutton stepping up, guys in the secondary, more situational drills and scenarios. First team D, they were trying to hold a 10-point lead versus the second team offense. Dylan Drummond getting looks too for that second team now uh, with a short gain, Jerry Jacobs uh, with the stop. And then Hutch had a sack, but the play continued. They awarded the first down. I'll, I'll talk a little more on that too. And then Branch with a nice pass breakup on Sudfeld. And then Sudfeld to Drummond, an interception by Branch. Uh, you can see that video um, uh, on X as well, a.k.a. Twitter. Um, Branch going up, high-pointing the ball, stepping right in front of Dylan. Sudfeld threw like three picks this day. And, you know, and, and according to John Macaron, called Teddy Bridgewater, and I completely agree with him. Got to get him in there. Sudfeld's not going to be able to carry this team if Goff goes down. He's just not. It, I can report all day that Sudfeld looks like he's got a grasp of this offense, but it's against twos and threes. It really, for majority of the camp, it really is two, threes, fours. He's not playing much against the ones, and when he does, he struggles. He, he does. It's just it's, he's he's got zero, zero um, uh, starting games versus anybody in in the NFL. He's got no like you know, he's just not a he's just not a guy, you know. And I know it's a backup position, and and and, I'm, and you're like Mark, why are you talking about the backup position? I just it's important because if this team wants to make a little bit of a run, wants to show that they can make it to the playoffs and win a playoff game or two, and Goff just happens to go down and they're and they're on like they're six and one, say they're six and one, five and two, and Goff goes down for three, four games, or something even worse, then they're in trouble. And that's majority of the NFL. It is. But if you but if you have a team that you think can make some noise, you have to get a valuable decent backup and Sudfeld isn't that so you know we'll talk about more on that later on down the road but not not in this video I don't think so the coaches continued to with the same scenario you know Sudfeld to chase Coda for a 28 yarder got a first down and then Sudfeld to Coda again but interception Cameron Sutton like I said those guys are stepping in you know it, it's it's Chase Coda it's 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 Sudfeld you know those guys are Coda's probably never going to make the team. He's going to be either a cut or a practice squad guy. Um, more likely cut in Sudfeld. Who knows? But, you know, first team just taking care of a business, stepping in there, getting the pick. So what do the coaches do? They reset it again. They try to get the second team out there still. Sudfeld to right, touchdown. 
And then there was two check downs right to Ibrahim. And then there was a sack by Charles Harris and another sack by Hutch. And they were just trying to reset it, though. They're trying to reset it. And what that tells me from playing football, when you have coaches that you'll have coaches that will go out there and go, do it again, do it again, do it again. And if you have a coach that's doing that continuously, reset the same thing over and over again, like they want to see what the second team can do versus the first teams. Because they're A, they're not happy with what they're seeing. B, they're getting frustrated. You know, so, and I don't expect the second team offense to be the first team defense. I really don't, but I expect better results. You know, they had some in here, touchdown to Brock Wright, you know, a nice little play by Chase Coda. They're there, but more often than not, they're not. And I think they're really trying to get a look at Sudfeld. That to me tells me that they're really trying to get a look at Sudfeld because Teddy Bridgewater is, has one foot in the building already. He does. You know, We've, we've heard the rumblings. We heard it months ago. We just heard it not too long ago again that he was back visiting. I don't know what's taking this team so long. Sign him. He's not going to cost a lot of money. Five, six million dollars, if that. I don't even really know. don't even know what he was getting paid by. Who's he last paid for? Miami? The Saints? I don't even know who he was playing for. I think it was Miami. I don't think he was making a ton of money. So I know Sudfeld's way cheaper, but... If you want to do anything with this team and Goff does go down, I have zero confidence in a guy like Nate Sudfeld. That's just me. And I'm not the coach. I'm not the GM. But that's just my opinion. If Goff happens to go down or looks terrible for some reason, which I don't think he will, you think Sudfeld's going to come in and look better? I don't. So, you know, I think Bridgewater can at least hold it down for a bit. Hold it down. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a guy like Teddy Bridgewater to come in and steal Jared Goff's job. I'm, you know, say it's for four games. I expect him to hold it down for two or three games and hopefully get a win out of at least one or two of them. So just to stay alive. But, you know, that's something that's down the road. So there was more observations going on. Chase Lucas did have an interception on a one-on-one. Also had a sack, too, I believe, on a blitz. So... He's stacking up practices right now. And then Julian Aguara, he had a pick. It was another terrible. You can see that throw on X, Twitter. You know, and, and, and I don't want to make this the Nate Sudfeld bashing show, but the throw was horrible. I don't know how he doesn't see Julian Aguara standing there. Aguara just kind of just steps right in front of Dylan Drummond. He just steps right in front. I don't know how he doesn't see him, though. Julian Aguara is not a small, small guy by any stretch. He's six foot four. 250, 260 pounds. I don't know how he doesn't see him. He just steps in front of Dr Drummond, and it, it looked like a pick six, but it probably wouldn't have been. But it was just, it was just an awful, awful read by Nate, Nate Sudfeld. And then you, you got Houston, Melafonwu, an undrafted free agent rookie, Chris Smith. They all had a sack on 11 on 11s, so it's good for those guys getting in there. Then Halapula Vitae, Vitae, and Graham Glasgow were were rotating at the right guard spot first team that's what you like to hear you know um uh, getting the reports that those guys are literally scrapping for a job right now so we'll see what happens but that gave colby sores the rookie the fifth year guy uh the fifth round guy getting all the second team reps so trying to get looks at sores and they're trying to find that, that 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 right guard to start so you know there is a legit camp battle going on between glasgow and vitae so you know sores looks like he's the guy coming off the bench um, and then guys like Starling Thomas and Branch paired up as gunners and getting and getting serious looks on special teams as well too. So they're trying to get that, trying to get at least uh, um, starting spots on special teams, especially Starling Thomas, who looks like he's going to be a guy that looks like he's on his way to making the team. He does have some issues. We'll talk about that too. But um, and Brian Branch is going to be a guy that's just barely going to come off the field. It feels like so. And then there's more news. We did have Veto Lyman Ode Abushi. If you know him, he was a 10 year veteran um, visiting the Detroit Lions. Um, you, can, you can find that on X2 as well. He made that announcement. He's a versatile, versatile old lineman. Uh, played left guard, offensive tackle, right guard, 10, 10 starts with the Detroit Lions. He was, I think he was drafted by the Jets. I want to say he was drafted by the Jets. Uh, played for the Texans, the Seahawks, the Cardinals, Chargers, and Rams. Uh, 51 overall starts as an old lineman, 32 years old. You know, don't really know if 
um, what they'll do if they bring him in. Don't know whose job's on the line uh, with an Odea Abushi signing, but it could mean, I don't know, it could mean a Matt Nelson, a Matt Nelson release. It could mean Herman Ifedi release. Herman Ifedi's not having the greatest camp, it's, it, it sounds like. So who really knows what was going on, but it's just a visit and more to come on that. And the depth on the D line starting to starting to really show. You can really see it. Levi and Wizurike, James Houston and Romeo Aquara playing on the third team shows that. That's a credit to Brad Holmes. You know, I know Levi O hasn't done a damn thing really. You know, showed maybe a little bit of spurts in that rookie year. James Houston obviously being that big time, that big timer six round pick from last year. And then Romeo with the resume. Romeo's got a resume. He's had some double digit sacks. He's made some plays for Detroit Lions. Um, but those guys playing on the third team just shows what our first and second team depth really, really is. So it's nice to see that there's good players on that third team. And that's credit to Brad Holmes, man. That's all credit to Brad Holmes right there, finding those kind of guys. Romeo, you, you can credit Bob Quinn for that. But, you know, keeping keeping Romeo around was, was Brad Holmes. And then there was another sack by Lucas, like I said earlier, a sack and an, and an interception. Um, yeah, he got to Adrian Martinez on a blitz. Uh, um, I'm blocked, so you know that's, that's good. That, that's good for Lucas. He's he's making noise. He's stacking up days, and then Riley Patterson. He missed on a 37-yard field goal. Bounced off the right upright. No real kicking battle going on on day 11, but uh, there still is a kicking battle going on. But you can't miss those 37 yarders, man. Those are crucial. 37 yarders are not big in the NFL. You have to hit those. So um, got to get a little bit stronger and a little more accurate there. But that's his strength, his accuracy. It's um, the power, I'm a little bit concerned about. But you can't miss 37 yarders, man. And then uh, Dylan Drummond showing out, you know, the undrafted free agent out of Eastern Michigan. Um, had a touchdown with Sudfeld, too, as well. So Savion Smith in coverage. You like to hear that as well, too. So a couple touchdowns thrown by thrown by Nate. Um, Drummond showing up, but also a couple, uh, three INTs by Nate Sudfeld as well. <clears throat> and then running back Craig Reynolds and tight end James Mitchell. Don't forget about these guys. They had a couple nice catches. Uh, they're looking active. You know, they're not getting crazy, crazy reps right now. Reynolds trying to get those three and four reps. Mitchell, he's behind too, man. He's behind guys like Laporta and Brock Wright. So he's getting second, third team looks as well. Uh, but they made a couple catches, so they're looking a little bit active out there, what, what you want to hear. Now, this is what I want to talk about earlier, guys. I talked about how Eric Schlitt came out and said that Gibbs – was struggling in pass protection. So this is why I love going to different outlets. This is why I love going to, to, to multiple outlets um, from Lions beat writers. And like I said, kudos to those guys for getting it done and putting out info. <clears throat> because Schlitt puts out that that uh, he's struggling. Gibbs is struggling in pass protection, which is something that we kind of knew. He wasn't. He doesn't. He's not known for that. And then you go to. Uh, uh, and then you go to like a Jeff Risden. Jeff Risden reports blocking drills with the running backs. Gibbs a no. Gibbs not even seen there, not even seen. Know where he is? He's with the wide receivers working on running routes with quarterbacks. <clears throat> so this is not a knock on the coaching staff or anything. I would never. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing. I have done that, but but I'm not doing that right here. This is Jameer Gibbs is not here to block. Okay, yes, he has to be, he has to do all those things. You know, do Staley when he was here before. You don't, you can't block, you can't play, which I think was a little bit, you know, blowing a little bit of smoke because DeAndre Swift was no great blocker. He really wasn't. He wasn't horrific at it, but he was not a blocker. He was a weapon. He, he, was, he, he was great in the, uh, he was fantastic catching the football. He bounced into the outside. That's what he was. And I think that's why maybe him and Deuce about butted heads a lot because I don't think Deuce did a lot of things that Swift liked. You know, and Deuce is more more old school. He's, he's more of an old school guy, but and I'm not ripping on Deuce either. But this is what Gibbs is. They take him out of the blocking, blocking drills. Running backs are trying to work on their blocking. Gibbs is off doing wide receiver routes with quarterbacks because that's what he is. He's a weapon. That's what... Gibbs is going to be, and I think Ben Johnson, he's not going to be putting him in situations where they need Gibbs to block a linebacker, a safety coming in, uh, a defensive end. It's not, you're not going to see that. If you're going to see Gibbs in there, he's going to have help. He's going to have a guy like a Decker, 
a Sewell, um, an H back, a, a Cabinda, if they keep him around. He's gonna, he's not going to be doing some solo solo blocking on, on on any one individual on defense. If it is, it's a mismatch, and it's going to be a, probably a win um, win for the defense if Gibbs has to block one on one somebody during actual football games. So. I just want to talk about that. that's why I love going to different outlets and seeing different seeing different views. So you just get the one view from Schlitt and you get the one view from Risden and they both say, you know, one he's not blocking well, the other guy says he's not even there in blocking drills. So, you know, so he's a weapon, man. He's basically what I'm saying, he's a weapon. So then Houston, uh, there, there, there's James Houston. I'm almost done here, guys. He he got dominated by backup right tackle Darren Paulo. But then dusted right tackle Panay Sewell, and he ducked under Herman Ifedi for a pressure. So, you know, he's still got some, still got some stuff going on right there with with James Houston. You know, um, his his strength is is getting to the quarterback, living in the backfield. We know all that stuff, but you know, he um, but he did get dominated by a couple old, by Darren Paulo, a backup right tackle. That's going to happen. But then he's beaten. A guy, a Pro Bowl right tackle in Panay Sewell and completely ducking under Herman Ifedi for a pressure. So that's what he is, man. That That's what James Houston is going to be. A situational pass rusher that's going to win and lose some of those matchups. So um, I expect big things from Houston, but I, I'm still saying he's not going to win um, a starting spot. He's, he's, just, he's just not going to because he's not a complete player. Not just yet. He's really not, man. And that's okay. Uh, if, he, if he's going to get to the quarterback and get possibly maybe double di- double digit uh, uh, sacks, a bunch of pressures, I'll take that all day, man. On seeing him trying to drop into coverage and looking absolutely like Waldo and just like lost. There, there's no way I'd rather see that. I'd rather see him just getting to the quarterback, work on his strengths, you know, work on the linebacker stuff later on. Obviously, they're going to try to get this guy to be some type of linebacker, you know, if he wants to play more. But he is a situational pass rusher, and that is not a bad thing. It is a good thing right now. So, and then the last thing, not least, but not least, anyways, Starling Thomas, you know, the rookie, the undrafted free agent, looks good out there. He really does. This is coming from Risden, too. And I really love Risden's, uh, I love all these guys' responses, reports, too. Um, Risden, I think, is a little more transparent. A little more transparent. He's going to say a little more. I don't want to use the word negativity, but he'll he's going to tell you the straight goods. He's just transparent about things. The other guys are too, but Risden kind of gets into it. I think just a little bit gets into a little, little more, a little juicier, a little meatier. Um, now he's talking about how Sarn Thomas is good out there, but he's extremely handsy. And I talked about this months ago. I talked about this months ago when I watched film on him. He's very handsy. He grabs a lot of penalties from him at the college level. He's a physical corner. He's a very physical corner. He, he's feisty. That's what he is. And he is, and he is a, is huge at defensive holding and illegal contact. He's huge on, and he's doing it in camp. He's having good days. Don't get me wrong. He's getting in people's faces. He's celebrating. He's having good days. But he is, he's getting the flag, flag thrown a lot on him. He's defensive holding and illegal contact. It's something that he did a lot in college. He did a lot. So. He's also he was seen on the sideline with guys like Will Harris, believe it or not, and and rookie Brian Branch about hand placements and being able to steer guys without grabbing. So he needs to work on that stuff, or he's going straight to the practice squad. They will not put up with this kind of stuff. And and Risen's also saying way too many illegal contract legal contact penalties by this secondary right now. He goes, they are. He goes. By the looks of it right now, they're going to lead the league or be they're going to be up there in, in illegal contact penalties for the 2023 season. It needs to get cleaned up. So, then this is going from the top cornerbacks like Sutton all the way down to the four-string guys. He's not just talking about guys like Star and Thomas. He's talking about overall. So that's why I love all these guys' comments and reports. Risden. He, he, he gets a little more into it, I think. He, he gets a little more into it, and that's no shade on anybody. But Risen will tell you the truth, man. And this guy, it needs to get cleaned up. 
The secondary has improved. Don't get me wrong. We, we, we know what's going on with the secondary. But if they're, if they're causing a lot of penalties and a lot of legal contacts and defensive holding, this is all for nothing. This is all for nothing. Sack, Hutchinson getting to the quarterback, call back, first down. They get just, you got to be smarter. You have to be smarter, and they have to use how to use their hands more. So it's not just one guy. It's the collective DBs going on from, from the top to the bottom. So that's it, guys. I want to end it off just, you know, end it off on a little bit of a negative note. But, hey, not everything around here is positive and all green, man. Some things can go into the red. Um, around here and a team just needs to clean up some stuff we see the improvements the improvements we hear the improvements we see it on video we, we, we the short videos we hear it from these reports but there are some things this team needs to clean up and problems with penalties is one of them we can't have that man going into the season or the chiefs will kill us man the chiefs will put 40 on us plus and you know that that just can't happen we can't have that we need to be better I'm sure we will. We got some time. Three more weeks. Three, four, four weeks. Four weeks until the kickoff. We got like 30, 30 something days. I'm on. Let's go, man. Like four, four and a half weeks. Let's go, guys. All right, man. But thanks a lot, guys. It's a long one. This was 31 plus. I appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, thanks for uh, listening to me rant and rave about our Detroit Football Lions. Day 11 in the books. Thanks a lot, guys. Don't forget to hit the notify, uh, the sub subscribe button on the bottom right. Don't forget to hit this uh, notification bell up top. Like, comment, share this video out. Let's go, guys. Detroit Lions, one pride, baby. Let's go. Boom. Woo!